Sunday morning. Hallelujah. Let's stand our feet and give praise to the Lord, shall we? Lord God, we love you. We thank you for the goodness of the Lord. Thank you for the privilege of gathering together in your name. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for a beautiful church. Hallelujah. Build on the worship you in and beautiful people to worship you in. Amen. That's a good thing. Hallelujah. So good to see all of you. Praise God. I feel like I've been isolated from my family. And I mean that it's been two months for me since I've been in worship with you. Because my wife and I were in Africa when all this started going down. And so we missed a couple more weeks than you did. But it's so good to see you. And thank you for being in the house of the Lord. We didn't know what we would get today. I was hoping for 5000 yeah. But, uh, we'll, we'll keep that figure out. Yeah, uh, right. yeah. Praise God. Saying, what do we do if we need every cue? Well, that'll be a good problem. Yeah. All yeah. Right. But thank you for, and as you can see, we try to make things out of consideration because one one thing is we don't want anybody to ever be afraid to come to the house. Yeah. And we took precautions, not because I'm fearful, but because we're considerate right. of others. Right. And, uh, it's not a bad idea to be every other kid and to sit with the immediate family. I know you've been stuck in the same house for weeks with those people. And maybe you were wanting to get away from them today. Maybe a couple of weeks we can do that. But uh, anyway, today, maybe you need to worship and pray together as a family. Anyway, <laughs> don't look at your husband's life. Watch not this time. Praise God. But anyway, it's good to be in the house of the Lord. Praise God. Hallelujah. Thank the Lord. You may be seated. Praise God. Praise God. As I journey through the land.
sister here. Praise God. In fact, I'm not preaching today because I'd be afraid I'd have stage fright. <laughs> Praise God. I got somebody else who didn't know if I could face a lot of audience anymore. Praise God. Hallelujah. I'm a little bit nervous about it. Praise God. Hallelujah. Glory, glory.
okay, I'm so messed up this summer. There's not going to be no children's camp, crusaders camp. Youth camps are pushed out the week after camp meeting. And we'll give you more details about all of that. And they're abbreviated youth camps, about three miles apiece. I think something like that. Crusaders camps will be during camp meeting, what it used to be. And some of that is logistics. Another part is they can get an offering. And Sunday school doesn't have any money. It's just that way. And so we're going to try to help them as we get back into here and try to help them and take an offering for that. But today, I just, I'm just reminding you, there's a space for a lot of missionaries around the world that uh, are on site. And they are going through much what we're going through. Talk to some. I know that, of course, I've been one missionary family in particular that I'm very familiar with, and they've been on total lockdown. They work for one week, and when they say total lockdown, there were no, there's no drive-in restaurants, no fast food, Michaela, no fast food places to go through. You know, you can't order pizza online. They had nothing. They had nothing, and they were totally shut down. And if they left their house. If they didn't have a valid reason, they would face fine. Not in prison, because that would be, but fines, hefty fines, and they had to have a real valid reason to be out. So that's not uncommon around the world. And uh, so just remember missionaries in prayer, and also don't forget them in their finances today. Praise God. Hallelujah. Say, He's worthy today, isn't He? Our praise. I know that's why you came. Hallelujah. We can, we can make announcements anytime that we're here to praise Him. Yes. Praise God. Hallelujah. You are worthy.
Lucy O. Sidgwick who passed. And um, uh, he turned nine years of age yesterday. And uh, I, I wish you'd pray for him. I know, I know it's, it's a little difficult because of his, his dementia and of what he's aware of when he's congregating. I'm not sure as far as even the loss of his wife.
your chances are very slim, but you never know. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise God. Maybe Sister Harris will let you drag her buck. Amen. <laughs> I don't think so. I think she guards that. Praise God. So please remember that on next Sunday morning, 1035, same time, same format. If we won't have Sunday school, there'll be no nursery, there'll be no lecture. So it's all in the sanctuary uh, next week, too. We're kind of trying to ease into this, but we just have to see how it goes. But uh, we are planning in a couple of weeks. You'll see in the newsletter to pick up on the way out what we're with. Our plan is step by step, slow and easy, to work into June, maybe. The Lord will help us to get into full steam then. And uh, so we're just, we all know it's everything's unpredictable. We don't know. We're just, if we've ever flown by the seat of hands, we're going to have. Amen. So anyway, praise God. Uh, so anyway, we wanted we didn't want to ignore our children, and they're they're uh, they're important to us. And uh, there's not a whole lot here. I do see a first time visitor here on Brian Chuki's lap. Brian Chuki, I mean, I don't know him. Has he been here? Okay, I wasn't here. I've not met this this guy. I've seen his pictures. And he looks like part of their family. <laughs> he looks like a little Braxton to me. Yeah. And anyway, really handsome dude. Yeah. Amen. I, I don't know how in the world God blesses us with such beautiful children. Yeah. But he really does. And that's, that's a great thing. Praise yeah. God. And, you know, I know sometimes we forget it, but they are a blessing. The Bible says they are. We have to believe the book, don't we? They don't always act like a blessing, but they are a blessing. Hallelujah. And so we thank God for them. Praise God. But anyway, not forgetting our children. I, we talked to Brother Pachuki, and we wanted to do something this morning that would uh, reach all ages. Brother Pachuki, I'm going to invite you to come. Brother Pachuki is going to dance for you this <laughs> Everybody. Praise the Lord. Lord. It's good being in the house of the Lord with you. And while we do agree, children are a blessing of the Lord. I have a two year old, and if anybody's willing to take her, we can prove how much of a blessing she really is. She's hitting the care of two who's in full sleep right now. And it is delightful. <laughs> and I mean that. No, I do want to take a moment to talk about change. Especially considering the day and age we live in. It's been often said the only constant in life is change. And unfortunately, the world has just found out how quickly things can change. Yes. But when I think about your toys, growing up, we either made our own toys or we had a set of Lincoln logs or Tinker toys. And most of the time we got bored with those so we found a way to make it a little more dangerous. And then we had something. But Harper has these blocks that are plastic and they have magnets in them. And it's pretty easy. And you don't have to be real creative to get something to work. Lincoln logs, on the other hand, you had about four different shapes that you could build and that was it. Another way things change I have here, if anybody would like to see this, my parents' wedding album. Yeah. <laughs> now, yeah. today, sure. we have something that we call the yeah. cell phone. Yeah. One of the things that I used to do, and this was actually my brother's demise, one of our moments of creativity and boredom, because our toys were not quite the same. We had a walnut tree and a pecan tree that grew about 15 feet apart. And we had always seen zip lines, and we knew those looked real, real cool. Well, Dad is a mechanic and a hoarder combined. And so we have everything that you could imagine to be a kid's dream and nightmare. 
And so we found some cable in that garage. And we didn't have any clasps or turnbuckles to fasten the cable. But I knew if I got enough in the bowl and some washers, I could tighten it up, tighten it up, and probably hold it. So I wrapped it around one tree, and then I wrapped it around the other, and I did about, oh, the steepest grade you can think of. And I stuck a pulley in the middle of it. Of course, I wasn't going to get on it. So I had Brian volunteer. And I stuck a handle that I made out of a rope. And the only knot I knew how to tie was a slip knot. And so the first go around, he gets up there, and I finally talk him into it. He gets about halfway across, and that bolt comes undone. And the cable falls to the ground. So before we lost any momentum, I hurry up and got him back on his feet. And I said, oh, I think I know what I did wrong. And we hurry up and we fasten it back to the tree. And the second time he goes down, about the same spot, instead of it falling off the tree this time, the slip knot finally worked as it was intended. And he's sitting there dangling with his fingers smashed in the handles that I had made. So this was our form of creativity and fun. Kids nowadays we don't have that same luxury and privilege that we did. And it is a wonder we survive. But while things change, one thing is always constant. And that thing is God. Amen. Malachi tells us, I am the Lord, and I change you. Hebrews, Brother Parker, already quoted it today. Jesus Christ was saying yesterday, today, and forever. Amen. And so while we may face uncertain times, right. and it may take just a pandemic oh, to change everything, right. God's still the same. Right. His word is forever settled in heaven. Oh, yeah. Heaven and earth will pass away, but his word will not pass away. Right. And he is not a man that he cannot lie. Right. So if he said that he's going to be your friend that sits closer to if he's going to be the ever-present help in your life in a time of trouble, then that means we can take it to the bank. Uh -huh. And it doesn't matter how upside down our world is, we can be assured Jesus is still in charge. Right. Yeah. And the money album is available after service. <laughs>
Let's never do that again. Amen. <laughs> Let's value yeah. this fellowship so rich and sweet. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. There's a couple of you are a little bit to call, but we can get along. Hallelujah. We can love them. Hallelujah. And you know I'm funny with you a little bit. If you don't think I am, then you probably do have a problem. Praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you. It's so good to have Lord and Sister Bibble with us today. Uh, they've been long time missionaries, about 87 years. And, uh, Spent their time in the Pacific region, the Philippines, Micronesia West is the area that they're in now, and living in, on the island of Guam, the beautiful island of Guam. Yes. And uh, I've got some, some of the most beautiful photos that I've taken anywhere I've taken in Guam. There's about two places there where you can get that kind of picture. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but anyway, and we're thankful God's hands on them. Like I said earlier, they're supposed to be on deputation. The deputation is not open yet, really. And uh, there's about three states where people can deputize right now. And that just happened this weekend. So it's not, uh, I don't even think we're deputizing in Oklahoma yet. So anyway, and it's pretty hard when churches aren't having services. You know, the whole thing. But we're so thankful they were able to be here today and agree to do that. We love them, appreciate them, people with a great spirit, praise God. And uh, there's one thing about it is that when David and Kelly and Dibble are in town and they're in church with us, they're going to come here and worship. All right. And we're going to be blessed as they do. Amen. We're glad they're here today. Praise God. Brother and Sister Dibble, I sent him a picture because he had not had a haircut for weeks. <laughs> and uh, he was saying something about it and he'd get my haircut at the place. So I found this picture of a hippie couple. <laughs> and uh, the woman looked an awful lot like Sister Debbie. And uh, reminded me of her. And uh, the guy had long hair and beard and all this stuff. And I sent it to him and it said, this wouldn't happen to be your latest photo of it. Praise God. He had a tie on his shirt. He was beautiful. But uh, I, I've never seen Brother Dibble with a hair out of place.
Once you learn it, some of you may know what it is. Very simple. It just says, Jesus is everything I need. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus is life and breath to me. Jesus, my Lord. How many believe that today? Come on, how about say, Jesus is everything.
somebody would say, Man, this child. He said, Don't let that be named among you as a child of God. Verse number five, for this you know that no, no whoremonger, nor unclean person, nor covetous man who is an idolater hath any inheritance of the kingdom of Christ and of God. Let no man deceive you with vain words, for because of these things cometh the wrath of God upon the children of disobedience. Don't be fooled by people who try to excuse their sin or their sinful lifestyle uh, and still claim to be an apostolic. Especially those that try to justify that using the word of God. So don't be fooled by that. I, I, I saw a video clip, and I know you're still standing. Give me just another minute. I saw a video clip recently of a guy that was dressed in an old pair of dirty jeans and a dirty ragged t-shirt. And, and uh, back, in the, back in the day, we would have called that grungy. I don't know if grungy is still a thing or not, but we would have called it grungy. And, and, and here's this guy in what appeared to be these dirty jeans and a dirty t-shirt. He had hair down to his shoulders and looked like he had never been introduced to a comb in his life. And, and while he's walking, it's in a church, and while he's walking up toward the platform, somebody in the pulpit is saying, we're so glad to have our pastor with us today, and we want him to come and bring us the word of the Lord. I got a little bone to pick, but Pastor mentioned that I got a haircut yesterday. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. And uh, I need to get another one because they were afraid to cut too much off. But, I, you know, when I get back home, hopefully Missouri is going to be open. I drove all the way to Oklahoma just to get a haircut. Just really to preach. I can't get a haircut. And, and, and I, I sought out this place on the Internet. And called them because of what they guaranteed. And the guarantee was beautiful by God. Yeah. <laughs> I woke up this morning uh, when my wife was sitting in the chair reading her Bible. I walked over to her and I said, it didn't work. <laughs> she said, what are you talking about? I said, I'm not beautiful. I looked in the mirror and it just didn't work. <laughs> Can I just say this today? I dress up when I come to church, and, and I'm not saying you have to have a suit and tie on, but I dress up because it's important to me. I take this serious. Amen. I want the world to know that it's serious business coming to church. I know the charismatic world has dumbed things down to the point where, and they use scripture to say, well, you can just come any way you want to come. Amen. And let me just say this. If you come... Uh, and if you come just straight from work, I've come more than once in my work clothes. When I was doing construction and pastoring, there were times that I just had, you know, it was either don't go to church, and that's not good for the pastor, but it's either don't go to church or come in your work clothes. And I can speak for pastor, I think, and just say that I think he'd rather have you here with your work clothes on than not at all. And it's true that when folks are coming and they don't know the Lord, yes, Jesus will take them any way they come. Amen. But it's about attitude after that. Oh, I wish I had more time. All right. I need to hurry up. Jesus gave his very best for you. You ought to do your best for him. Amen. I wish somebody just clap your hand for him. Amen. 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 Verse number seven. Be not, be not you therefore partakers with him. Don't associate with people like this. For you are sometimes darkness. But now ye are light in the Lord. Walk as children of the light. For the fruit of the Spirit is in all goodness and righteousness and truth. Proving what is acceptable unto the Lord. Have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness. But rather reprove them. For it's a shame even to speak of those things which are done in secret. But all things that are reproved. That word is rebuked or shamed. Are made manifest by the light. For whatsoever doth make manifest is light. Wherefore, he saith, Awake thou that sleepest and arise from the dead, and Christ shall give thee life. See then, that ye walk circumspectly, that word is exactly, or diligently, or perfectly, not as fools, but as wise. Verse 16, redeeming the time. Everybody say, redeeming the time. Come on, we're spread out here, so you're going to have to say it real loud. Shout it, redeeming the time. 
Because the days are evil, wherefore be ye not unwise, but understanding what the will of the Lord is for just a few minutes today. I want to preach on this subject. Things are looking up. Amen. Things are looking up. Amen. Would you help me and put your Bibles down? And would you clap your hands and give the Lord praise in this house today? Since 
were taking a little trip down memory lane today. How many remember singing this old song? The mighty God is Jesus. The Prince of Peace is He. The everlasting Father. The King eternally. The wonderful in wisdom by whom all things were made. The fullness of the Godhead in Jesus is displayed and is called. Bible school, and of course Bible school is a place of training, but 
I remember hearing a message in Bible school. A friend of mine got up to preach, and he had written a special song to go with his preaching. He grabbed his guitar and walked up to the plat to the pulpit and strung that guitar, and he said, "We are dead. We are dead." And that pretty much summed up the extent of the preaching. He's pretty much dead from the start. But then I remember messages that I've heard, from, like the one I heard when I was about 12 years old. If I could re, if I could paint, I could recreate the entire setting for you. I was in a church in, uh, just outside of New York City in Mamaroneck, New York, Westchester County. And there was a man preaching by the name of Dr. Kennedy. Dr. Kennedy was a rather large man, had trouble with his legs because of his weight, and so they took a chair and a table and put it on the platform with a microphone on the stand. I've never seen that before. I was 12 years old. I watched Dr. Kennedy hobble over to a chair and sit down in the chair. He had a Bible. It was the biggest Bible I've ever seen in my life. It had to be 10, 12 inches thick. Amen. And he sat there and opened that Bible, got in that microphone. He preached from the book of 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse number 3. Thou, therefore, endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. I will never forget that message. Ever. Amen. I remember a masterpiece message that I heard when I was about 13 years old. The preacher was Bob Wolf. Brother Wolf preached a message titled, A Date with Destiny. Amen. I was there in that little building in Milford, Connecticut as a 13-year-old boy. And I heard the voice of the Lord as I was balled up in the floor, crying out to the Lord as the Lord laid his hand on me and called me to preach this gospel. Masterpiece. Messages. I can tell you about another message I heard of Brother Bill Whitson, an Oklahoman. He came to the state of Connecticut and preached a message titled, The Danger of Side Roads. Fifteen years old, I sat there in the congregation. He told about a young couple that went off into the desert in their vehicle, told nobody where they were going got off on their own against everybody's advice and were not prepared for what they faced and they got into trouble and their car broke down and they almost lost their lives there in the desert. He preached to us and told us how getting out of the flow of the Holy Ghost and out from under the anointed authority of the leaders in your life will get you into trouble. And I laid on the concrete floor of that campground and cried out to the Lord. Yes, 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 yes. Pulled me back. Where I needed to be. Can I talk to the young preachers here for just a moment? And I'm hurrying today. Amen. Let me just tell you that every time you get into this school bit, amen, you ought to take it seriously. It's not fun and games. It's not finding something off the internet that sounds ca catchy. Amen. Hear me, preachers, today. Somebody's life could be in your hands. Amen. Somebody's future could be in your hands. You ought to preach with the anointing and power of the Holy Ghost that's on your life. Yeah. And can I preach to the saints in the pews for just a moment today? Some of you know this. The old timers used to say that praying pews make preaching pulpits. You want your preacher to preach better? You ought to pray more. Well, I wish somebody help me preach right now. You want better preaching in your church? You better pray more. You better pray that every time that preacher gets up in the pulpit, that there's fresh anointing there, and that there's fresh power there. Pray in you. Yeah, they preach in you. Can't be saved without a preacher. Right. God can't work in your life unless you've got faith. You can't receive the Holy Ghost without faith. Amen. And there's only one way to receive faith according to the Bible. Faith coming by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. You need to have a preacher in your life. You need somebody that will stand behind this desk and declare the truth of the Word of God. 
that was called sin, sin, and my back up and my turn around. You've got to have a preacher in your life. Oh, will somebody would clap their hands and give the Lord a word. Paul hearing messages preached from Ephesians 5. Mostly, I would hear them uh, preached by older ministers. And they'd use verse 16 as their text. And I've skipped about half of what I need to preach here today. But they would preach about the subject of redeeming the time. It was usually, as I said, an older minister. Of course, as a teenager, everybody was old to me. Amen. Brother Parker still up. No, I'm not going to go there. <laughs> Of course, these older ministers would preach from the perspective of not having a lot of time left due to their advanced age. And therefore, we need to redeem the time. We need to take care that we use our time wisely. I recall hearing ministers preach, and usually, again, in the elder ministers, but I hear them preach that we should redeem the time because the coming of the Lord yes. was at hand. That's right. I, I know it's late. I'm out of time, but I, I've got to pause here for just a second and remind somebody that Jesus really is coming. Yes, yes. text 
Amen. The definition is to buy up, to ransom, to rescue from loss, to redeem, or to improve opportunity. All right. To improve opportunity. Amen. The best way to explain scriptures with scripture so very quickly. I need you to help me today for just a minute. The Bible gives the account in 2 Kings chapter 7 and talks about the preacher that declared the word of the Lord to a city that was under siege. You remember the story? Most of you here today, the city was completely surrounded. Nothing going in, nothing coming out. All supply lines were cut off because of the enemy ben Hadad that was outside of the gates of the city. It had been weeks, maybe months, since any food had come in to the city. Things were desperate yes. inside the city. Starvation was rampant. The residents of the city resorted to eating things that they normally would never have eaten. Right. Dove's dove, you remember the story, sure. was being sold and eaten as food. Donkeys were considered unclean animals according to Jewish law and therefore not to be eaten. But with their starvation mentality, a donkey's head, the head, mind you, was being sold. For 80 pieces of silver that values out in our currency today to somewhere over $1,000 for something that normally you couldn't pay somebody. Right. Things were bad. They were so bad that mothers were literally taking their own children and boiling them and eating them. And the preacher speaks a word from the Lord and says that at this time tomorrow, there's going to be food available in abundance. Fine, exquisite, delicious culinary delights will be available. And for just a very pittance of money, it will be available. And a leader in the king's court mocked the preacher and he said, that'll never happen. God would have to open a window in heaven for that to happen. Can I just say this today? But not discount the word of the Lord. All right. When the Lord speaks and says He's going to pour out a blessing, yeah. Amen. You better not just sit there and say, "Well, that's never going to happen." Right. Amen. You better just sit there and say, "I don't know how it's going to happen, but I believe it's going to happen." If the word of the Lord has come forth and said there's a blessing coming, I'm getting mine. Amen. Four lepers outside the city. You've got to understand the position that these guys are in. Uh -huh. Nobody. Nobody. Everybody say nobody. Nobody. nobody cared about these four guys. Amen. Because of their physical condition and the contagious, deadly nature of their sickness, even under normal circumstances, they weren't welcome right. inside the city. Right. And because they were lepers, they're enemies. Didn't even mess with them. They weren't worth the price of an arrow right. to shoot and kill them. I mean, that's pretty bad. At least your adversary wants to take you out. And if he doesn't, there could be a little bit of a problem there. Amen. I don't know how you feel about it, but I, I, I want it to be this way. Every time I swing my feet out of the bed in the morning and my feet hit the floor, I want all of hell and all of its hymns to say, oh no, he's up again. It's going to be a bad day for us. Nobody cared about these four levels. So here sit these four men. Not work his spit, as they say. And they're sitting around and finally they decide to talk about the situation. Yeah. And they said, what are we going to do? Well, let's look at our options. Yeah. He said, well, if we sit here, uh -huh. we're going to die. Right. Option one. Sure. Option two, if we go to the city, there's no food in the city. No we're going to die. Yeah. Option, three, option three, we could go to the Syrian camp. And the worst, worst that could happen. Right. I mean, that's a pretty bad situation. Right. 
The worst thing that can happen yeah. is we're going to die. Yeah. But maybe, oh, yeah. just maybe, yes, they'll have pity on us and give us some food. You see, yeah. sometimes you just got to put yourself yeah. in the way of a blessing. Yeah. Yeah. You just got to move yourself and get where the blessing is falling and get in line and say, hey, the worst that can happen. I'll go home just like I can. But it could be. It could just be that somehow there's a blessing waiting for me. And if I get in line, I'll get a blessing. Thank you. Yeah. Amen. Sometimes you've got to just push yourself outside your comfort zone. I wish you'd have to preach for about two more minutes here. You just got to push yourself outside of what you're accustomed to. Amen. I know being at home and watching church online is not the ideal. Right. Right. But if it takes worshiping the Lord in my house, yes. so I can make it, I'm going to worship the Lord in my house. Amen. Amen. Sometimes you just got to push yourself just a little bit. Brady Brown said, sometimes the most important thing you can do is just show up. Amen. Right. Just showing up improves your opportunities. Yes. Right. Amen. Can I just say this to you today? When life starts stacking up on you, anybody felt like life's been stacking up on you here the last couple of weeks? When it, it just like stacks stuff on top of stuff and and you're in isolation and you're locked down and you don't know when it's going to end and it just keeps stacking up and stacking up and stacking up and, and you don't see where there's going to be a breakthrough in then and, and it takes every bit of determination you have in you just to drag yourself through every day and say, I believe it's going to be all right. I believe it's going to be all right. Amen. Can I preach to you for just a little bit today and tell you that every time you lift your hands in that situation, your opportunities, amen. At a time when life gets hard and you fall on your face before God and you call out to Him, you're improving your opportunity. Right. 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 Amen. Sometimes just the best thing you can do to redeem the time is just show up. Amen. I know we're separated today. We've got pews in between us, and I almost fell off the platform. It's okay. Thank the Lord. Wouldn't that be awesome? Hallelujah. We can get something going here. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. But sometimes, even though we're separated, it just takes a little bit of determination in your spirit and say, you know what? I'm in church on Sunday morning, and I'm going to redeem the time. I'm going to improve my opportunity just a little bit. I need a blessing, and the best way to get it is to give God some praise. Let me get healing in my body. I don't know where it's going to come or how, but the best way to get it is to give God praise. Jesus, I'm here 
day's not normal. And so somehow we've got to improve our opportunities here. Right. 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 Okay? I know it's not comfortable because normally you'd be walking down the front and getting up here at the altar and have your hands raised and ask God to touch you. That's the way we do it. That's the way we've done it all our lives. For most of us. But today, I, I, I just need to understand that if you can, right where you are, right. just take about two or three minutes. And I'm going way, way, way over time. I'm acting like your pastor today. I'm way over time. here today. Yes. You need God to touch you today. Yes. And, and, and if there's nothing going on in your life, if there's not a problem in the world, just the fact that you've been stuck at home, isolated for nine bazillion years, Forget about what's happening. Forget about all the social distancing and all the robot cues. Somebody just lift their hand. 